afternoon viewers and listeners and listeners so I've had this trailer for about eight years now and I figure it's about time I turn it into something beyond the ordinary shed I'm gonna take it to work with me uh, so the first step will be giving it its own power system to run tools and such. So I'm going to start with a couple of these 100 watt photovoltaic panels. And I've got room up there for about four more of them later. And then of course all the equipment necessary to store and use this energy. So I don't know, I'm not sure how much energy there is to be had from this one stupid little fusion reactor. So the first thing, of course, is to figure out how the panels should be oriented on the roof. I can get six on here later on. I think I'll probably put a bolt right through the center of this. So in order to obtain some angle, what I have is this bed frame. I just gotta finish grinding the rivet out of here to liberate it from the other piece. And of course, when grinding, you want to have all your safety procedures in order. You gotta have your safety glasses and your hearing protection, but most importantly, make sure the sparks are going the correct direction. So, I believe I'll use four four inch pieces of angle like this, and here this trim piece is centered on the structural member beneath. I'll center this on that, I'll put one hole through here, I have a through bolt, I'll put a couple holes into the frame of the panel right around the middle. But I'll lift the panel up just a little bit when I'm aligning these things so that the middle will float above the roof here so they're not rubbing on each other all the time. But as you can see, this is not an application for a 90 degree angle, so I need to bend this angle open a little bit. Give a try that. Perfect. There are the brackets with bolts in them. I'm using these pieces of rubber roofing. Wear these bolt down to the roof of the trailer so they don't rub a hole in it. Fortunate to have a nice place to go from. This piece of trim turns out to be almost perfectly centered on the steel channel below. Like so. So I was able to drill that hole first and then measure over and drill another one. Then bolt all these things firmly in place with the solar panel shimmed up just a bit in the middle so that it won't be touching the roof after it's mounted. And then drill the holes through these holes into the side of the solar panel. So I could then take the whole assembly off and bolt these brackets to the side of the panel first because you can't get to them once they're down like that. And then put down a big gob of sealant around each hole before setting the whole thing in place and bolting it down again. I also took this opportunity to caulk up some of these seams that will now be somewhat defended by the solar panel. Make sure that the wires are out from under it here. And just start with a big glob of sealant right there. And over there. Tap it into place. Now, one thing I can do right away to prevent some of these wires from getting away is these are 12 volt nominal panels and I'm going to do a 24 volt system so these will be connected in series. So I connect the negative of one to the positive of the other. And that's done and these two will go down to the charge controller. It's time to turn our attention to the indoors here. I've decided to mount all the equipment at the tongue end here, even though that's a bit of weight on the tongue, I think that will be fairly enough offset by the rest of the heavy things I'll be putting in here. So I'll be using these four golf cart batteries, because they're cheap, and four 6 volt batteries in series will give me 24 volts, which is the equipment that I happen to have from my beginning experiments on the house. So I was already using this controller on the house for quite some time, 
And then this inverter, which is a modified sine wave. I know it would be nice to have a true sine wave inverter here, like a Samlex or something. But I have this, and I do not have $500. So I've used this quite a bit already. I've run just about every tool I own and every small appliance in our house off of this at one time or another without issue. So I'm going to use it here. So I'll be building an enclosure around these batteries here and venting it to the outside out of the uppermost portion of the enclosure to let the hydrogen out. I'm not sure how much of an issue that is with only these four batteries, but it's easy to do. And there's no reason not to box these off as they would be a hazard. Here, anything, any metal tools fall on any of these terminals, you have a short with a tremendous amount of energy here. And boxing them off will keep the tops of them clean after I clean them so that you don't have particles falling in when you take the caps off, say a quarterly-ish, to add distilled water to them. So the important thing on a high-powered, low-voltage system like this is to have very good quality connections and very large and short conductors, as the potential for loss is great. Of course, you always want top-notch connections on anything you're doing, but on a low-voltage thing like this, it is the difference between working and not working. For connecting the batteries to each other in series here, I had very good luck using scraps of copper pipe, like a half-inch soft copper, and flattening that in the vise, and then hammering it after that to make sure that it's very tightly flattened to avoid corrosion. Now the manuals to your inverter and charge controller should have recommendations as to what size conductor to use for various distances, but if at all possible, keep all of these items right next to each other and right next to the batteries. And what I'm going to be using to make the connections on all these wires here, and what I recommend having if you're going to do anything like this at all, as it is an absolute bargain at about an hour's labor on the internet, they have these hydraulic crimping tools with various dies for all kinds of wires from, this one is from about six gauge up to ridiculous. And you can use terminals like this, which you can get at the auto parts store in the battery section, or at the Rural King in the welding section. And this will crimp this around your wire with, uh, on this model, supposedly 16 tons of force. But whatever it is, it's quite powerful, and it's like being welded. But of course, firstly, I find this interior skin that comes on this thing to be absolutely useless. So I'm taking it down. I'd like to put up like a 3 8 plywood here. Only that thin because it has to curve on this front surface here. I think I'll get something like a 5 8 on the side walls so that I can attach things anywhere I want and bump into the walls without putting big holes in them. I figure as long as we're opening these walls, we might as well insulate them. Since I hope not to open them again. And it would be nice to have the ability to climate control this someday. They are all insulated, and I found some half-inch treated plywood that's a bit too weathered for any new projects outdoors, but plenty solid still. Ordinarily, I like to line my battery boxes with scraps of cement board in order to make them super safe. But that is a lot of weight, especially on the tongue here. Really, for this trailer in general, we're going to be struggling to keep this weight reasonable. And I highly doubt that there is any chance of a fire in here, so I'm going to save the weight. These are all going to be very tightly connected with lock washers. They'll be checked quite regularly. I'm going to have this breaker here. It's not really possible to draw enough power to heat these batteries up. They'll be completely protected. It is highly unlikely that anything could happen. And I'll take advantage of my new pocket screwing jig for additional savings of weight and space. And now I've just drilled a vent 
for the hydrogen so that it doesn't accumulate in this box. Right up here, as close to flush to the top as I can get, on through to the outside, and I'll put some screen over it out there so bugs and such don't get through. And I've just drilled a couple of small holes in the floor for intake. Now this whole thing can be sealed up with caulk, and put some weather stripping around the top, and make a lid, which I will just screw down, because I only have to get in there like every three months to check the water in the batteries. Now a bit of this electrically oriented grease to improve conductivity and prevent corrosion. And there you have the inverter and charge controller pretty much as close to the batteries as possible. You've got about an 18 inch cable there. The heat shrink in this case is just to help prevent short circuiting in this tight area. And there's the cable that'll run straight from the charge controller to the inverter, join up with these battery cables. Minimize the length of the whole thing again. And go ahead and connect these batteries in series. There to there, there to there, and there to there, positive to negative. And to do so, uh, I'm going to go flatten some copper pipe. And there it is. 24 volts as soon as I turn this breaker on. Twenty-four point eight volts. All right. Now we can hook up the panels and get charging tomorrow. Under our own power now. Fifteen hundred watt heat gun. All right. Good morning. Time to bring those solar panels in here. Now, what do you do when you wanna put something through the wall? To find the location on the other side, get your big long drill bit. Good thing I removed the spare tire, eh? So I'm gonna put the wires from the roof on the panels in some nice PVC conduit here. Otherwise, in this case, they'd be literally flapping around in the breeze. So, I got a drill for this fitting, which is an inch and an eighth, roughly. Just put some sealant on there. Oh, the sealant is thick this morning. And I've marked where there's a piece of frame in there. The hollow side is facing this way, but it's wood filled on this front. Making up the leads to go through the conduit. I have some 8 gauge wire here. It doesn't have to be quite this thick, but it'll minimize losses. I happen to have some and it fits the connectors well. I'm going to install some MC4 connectors. So they plug right into those panels. And we are now soldering with our trailer power. So there's that is. Let's see if I can jam it into the connector. All right, that seems to be in there. So now I've got a bit of heat shrink. I'm going to add to here to protect the primary insulation from the sun a bit. And now the strain relief, that rubber bit there. And the clampy bit there. Come back here. And the nut. Now I've got this flexible bit of conduit on the end of here that I am going to bend like so so that nothing goes up and then down the conduit. I'm going to strap it to the solar panel bracket, I think. But first, fishy fish. connect them to the appropriate input terminals at this end. Yeah, you don't want to connect something like this with it right ready to be under load. This DC is quite good at arcing. I'm gonna need some weight here. Of course it's windy now. So anyway, so you don't want to connect something like this under load. 
the DC is quite good at arcing, not having to deal with that zero crossing nonsense. And look there, even with a half inch layer of foam on them, 27 volts from the panels. A little bit gets through. Not going to be enough to charge anything or cause any arcing. But with everything properly veiled, let's go unveil it. The unveiling! Let's go see what happened. Okay, there it's decided to run the panels around 37 volts for maximum power output which is around 25 volts, around 3 amps, getting around 75 watts out of a 200 watt array. Which is quite fair for it being November, sun at a low angle there, and these panels not really pointed at it so much. You could adjust that with your parking choice. This is adequate power, and it'll be lots better in the summer when I tend to do the most work. And of course, I'll put four more panels up here when I can afford them. I could have put these on a frame that enabled me to tilt them toward the sun, but I didn't figure that it was worth all that work to me on this. I just went with a simple, sturdy, as tight to the roof as possible, as I'm not really going to want to mess with that every time I pull onto a new job. This should bring in enough power anyway, as with one or two people working out of this trailer, Power tool use is generally pretty intermittent. But will it run a 13 amp table saw? No problem. But how about a 15 amp miter saw? Fantastic! And of course now, I need to set up the rest of the trailer. But this concludes the solar power portion. I'll continue with the rest of the trailer, and I'll come back and show the progress as I go. But for now, thanks for watching.